like I'm still trying to find like my niche if I'm being honest I don't know I enjoy talking I enjoy like speaking about things I enjoy having conversation and at the same time I'm trying to navigate this experience of being a student very close to being a professional um, especially with the field that I'm going into because um, the internet gives little room for explanation and context sometimes and so I feel like I'm kind of in this weird interim I've definitely established my interest in nature my interest in being outside and I'm trying to navigate the painting side of things um, because I still want to talk I still want to engage communication wise and at the same time I think that I'm trying to find the topic to talk about and then you know they have like am I the a-hole like reddit advice and things I don't necessarily want to do that because although we would love although I would love all the answers like I truly believe people hold the answers to their questions so I don't want to be like out here saying what people should or shouldn't do based on my uh, educated but little expertise I feel the need to have the audacity I was what was I doing now the jokes can flow but I definitely am the the girly girl sitting at home watching Pride and Prejudice um and you know what I'm saying getting my feels a little bit but I was thinking about the concept of like love stories and you know drama and relationships and things like that in media right I'm gonna just do this first one today I was like This is a paint by numbers paint set, but we're gonna go with it. I was thinking about how, you know, of course we internalize from a very, very young age what love is supposed to be. You know, we internalize love as, you know, this fairy tale experience, this happily ever after. And I think I was thinking about it like random thought, right? Who who talks about that? I think it's oh what's her name? Something Winsworth. Woodsworth? Something. I don't know. See if I could find the quote, put it on the screen. But she talks about how in in literature, right? It is important for authors to give the reader the autonomy to decipher what is being said, right? It is up to the actor, the actor, the reader to be an active participant in consuming the artwork in the media and the writing in the literature, right? And so I was thinking about it like, yeah, there, you know, of course, we talk about agendas and the very um, so societal impact of literature um, and why art, the power of art, really, to impact a greater understanding, a, a greater movement in the world. And I was thinking about like, I want to say, like, very 
young age, right? You know, you can't blame the the child's psyche for picking and like um, internalizing certain themes and concepts that we see over and over again. We see the happy couple, we see the drama, the climax, the issue. We see the coming back together. We see the codependence. We see the obsession. We see the toxicity. We see the um, idealism, right? But we don't capture it as that. We don't conceptualize it like that as children. As children, you know, we make, I think we make concepts simple. This is the answer, this is what it is. And so it's definitely not on the responsibility of the child. Right, so it's not it's not up to the child, it's up to the adult to understand it. Now, whether that's an adult, an authority figure in the child's life, or that child when they become an adult, when they gain more knowledge or understanding of the way that life works, right? So I was thinking about Pride and Prejudice, I was thinking about Jane Eyre, right? And I mean, these, these movies, the drama, the drama. Like, you mean to tell me this man had a whole wife in his attic, didn't say anything, had the nerve to really get married? Especially at that time, especially at that time where a woman's status and power mainly literally came from her being married to a man being married to a rich man being married to a land owning man, a working man, all right? Like, Jane was out here just trying to get her teaching on, do what she had to do, live an independent life. And it's like you had the audacity to mess that up and then you know what you got going on. Right. So it's like having the discernment to be like, okay, uh, something wasn't right here. I was thinking about it because I'm like all right these are movies right we know art imitates life right but I think when we get to that age where it's like you have to question everything
it was just like I love these movies for the because you I see them so differently now like I see things of like forgiveness and remaining intact for one's values and oneself now of course these themes and these stories are heavily influenced by the patriarchy heavily influenced by misogynoir heavily influenced by misogyny heavily influenced by just the bs right defines all of those and I think there's so much discourse that can be gained from them. I remember I was watching, I'm forgetting their YouTube name, but they talk about the importance of classics because classics help you to create a stage, set a stage for the changes that need to be made. They allow you to have critiques on multicultural issues. They allow you to have critiques on class issues. They allow you to have critiques on age issues um because i don't even want to you know glaze over that like it was just like come on y'all we doing a lot right now love is such a complex feeling it's such a complex experience for humans from birth to death right we experience a range of love we, ex we understand love so differently as time goes on and i think it can be very tainted by media by movies that we consume and that's why it's our right as consumers as readers to take an active role in challenging those thoughts i do think that we really have to redefine love right we have to redefine it and I know I'm actively redefining love. I'm experiencing love in so many different ways than I had before. I think love was definitely a survival tool before and now it's, it's like an option really. It's a decision, it's a choice to express this feeling and to dive into the feeling. And it has to be a safe space. It has to be a welcoming space. Um, and we also need to have the tools to take care of ourselves when our love isn't received and reciprocated. Um, and I think that's what we lack a lot in media and movies is that it's like do or die. It's like black and white, like give me your all or have nothing. And that's wonderful to say, but to actually do can be a little selfish, could be a little toxic, a little overwhelming. We need to both be able to, or all parties need to be able to take care of themselves and then be able to take care of each other. Now, different relationship dynamics call for different things. Um, so it's not like this one size fits all, but I think something that's majorly lacking from our understanding in childhood when consuming this media is that you don't have to be anywhere. You don't have to do anything. And you should keep giving yourself the room to grow and evolve. And if things don't align, they fall all, they fall away and it's okay that they fall away. Um, but we learn from a young age that love is all consuming, it's controlling, it's all knowing. And that's not the truth. Love is very confusing. Love is complicated. Love hurts. And I think those feelings could be talked a lot more in society. From platonic relationships to romantic relationships to familial relationships. Like, I don't know, bruh. 